stainless steel as my medium and sculpture as the media that I choose to work in has this, I love the sense of immediacy in working with it. It's being able to take a heavy solid thing or a light solid thing or a light flimsy thing, being able to introduce an electrical current to it, watching something that go, goes from solid to liquid back to solid in like a mere microsecond, and being able to watch it stand on its own. That is something that I find exciting, and I guess magical. I'm originally from Brooklyn, New York, uh, an area called Bedford-Stuyvesant. If you've uh, seen the old movie, Do the Right Thing, that was filmed about six blocks away from my house. Artists such as Jay-Z, uh, Notorious Big, uh, the RZA from Wu-Tang, uh, they've came up from around my, my area. I grew up where I didn't have my parents put blocks in front of me and saying that I can't. Both of my parents um, refuge to this country. And one of the things that I was always taught was to, of course, work hard, study, and make sure that what you do is worth doing. When I was in school, I pretty much did a lot of drawing. Uh, drawing for me was a nice mechanism to release energy, pepped up energy. So I used it as a coping mechanism in school. I went to a high school that had three years of art training. I was able to sharpen my eye, my illustration skills. It was at Notre Dame that I really got exposed to sculpture and uh, taking basic courses, taking welding courses. During that time, uh, that pretty much set the course of me doing what I'm doing. I met a living legend, uh, an artist by the name of Richard Hunt. I had someone who was who looked similar to me, had a similar background, being from the city, inner city, um, creating these pieces that, you know, the Smithsonian named them the preeminent sculptor of the 20th century in 2000. So to have somebody of this uh, stature um, give me advice, you know, at, at an early age, I was like, yeah, I can do this. I applied for grad school, received a fellowship um, at the University of Kentucky. And um, while I was there, I actually met a uh, artist by the name of John Henry. And that's what led me to Chattanooga. I researched Isaac and um, I hired him. And he ran my, he ran my studio and, and my whole operation for three years. So what he didn't know, he learned. I always say, and will always say, that I received my PhD at the School of John Henry. Just watching somebody that's already accomplished and someone who's been there, just watching them and how they deal with their own creative problems um, is a real education in itself. I travel all around the world with him, putting up pieces, taking it down. Uh, learning about logistics and how to get to a monumental scale. And um, during my last year of working with him, my third year, I decided that um, if I needed to and wanted to get to his stage or near his stage, I needed to step away and start making my own work. Isaac, I think, is a sculptor which I would describe as a, an experimenter. I would describe his work as clean, as thoughtful, sometimes monumental. I always can tell an Isaac piece because it, it deals with a very simple geometry, but there's a composition quality to it that is not simple. There's a, a, a feeling of movement that's always generated in the work uh, based on how he's arranging those geometric shapes, and he's using that to create a dynamic um, that's, um, I guess, implying motion. It's really the exploration of forms, mass, 
void, gravity, and how one can manipulate the space around a particular area with those in, in mind. The, the metal that I choose, uh, stainless. Stainless steel is a alloy. In its structure, it is mixed. And my heritage being both uh, Latin and black, um, that is something that speaks to me within the materials that I use. I don't do a lot of drawings uh, with my pieces. What I usually do is I'll create them in a smaller scale model form. And I, I do that because for me, it's like I'm working in 3D. So I want my whole experience of creating to be three dimensional. It's coming from these like tiny things and then those expressions, he's just building them big. And, and, and that's a different way to work. I have a whole bunch of material that uh, I that I keep from other projects that I use. I never throw away a piece. There's no the, the word scrap is not in my vocabulary. Even if it's a tiny little you know piece of steel, you just toss it in a bucket. Maybe it becomes a part of a piece of artwork or one of his art sketches. And so Isaac have all these piles all over the studio that's like metal, but it's not trash piles, it's like resource piles. Small pieces are really interesting. You know, what happens if, you know, I take this piece and put it on top and then build this piece off to come up here. It's kind of like being a mad scientist or that wild alchemist, you know, uh, putting things together and, and seeing what happens. Being able to defy gravity and then have a sphere on it. He is a thinker and a pretty thorough thinker. Um, but I think his work also, from time to time, will lead him. And um, that's a, a pleasure to watch. What I do appreciate about Isaac, as an artist and just as a human being, is that um, his work doesn't like uh, stay within the walls of his studio and the worth of his work doesn't stay in the wall of his studio. I think he's open to you know sharing the resources that he has and then he's open to sharing the knowledge that he has with people and systems. He's deep in the background of, of what's happening in closed spaces that's informing what art looks like in Chattanooga in the future. Having professional artists at the table is so critical um, because artists think differently and sometimes better <laughs> and more creatively than non-artists. And I think that every organization can really benefit from the artist's viewpoint. One of the reasons why I make art and I get out in the public and try to be a steward for the arts is because I believe that I was given a lot of opportunities that I took advantage of. I give as I've been given and I try to continue because it takes everyone to do their part if we want to have our community be full. You know, not only is he involved in the, in the art in public places and his own work and sitting on art and culture committees, but he's also very um, invested in perpetuating education about sculpture. Here to here. It's a responsibility uh, like that. that because I've reached a certain point in my career and had so many doors open for me, I have to open the doors and the minds of others that are wanting to do the same. All right, so the idea is you make sure you keep this nice and flat, okay? When I go out and do whatever I do, I'm not only carrying my dreams and hopes, but I'm also carrying my parents' dreams and hopes. And one of the things that I believe being an artist is that I'm fulfilling that because I can wake up, create, 
create something from my mind and then make a living off that. And I don't think there's anything more freer than being an artist in this world.